Okay, our next talk is uh, creating ARM using Visual Define XML Editor by mm -hmm. Dimitri Kolosov. Um, if I got it right, it's, uh, this talk is not only about making um, outputs fair using the analysis results metadata, but actually mm -hmm. it's an open source project, so uh, the code itself actually should also be fair. Is that right, Dimitri? Oh, that's correct. Yep, that's that's true. So um, thank you for joining. And today I'm going to discuss um, the analysis results metadata as well as a tool, the Visual Define XML Editor, which can help you to create it. So first of all, let's start with the analysis results metadata. It's um, a standard which uh, was released uh, like five years ago. And uh, you all probably know about uh, Define XML, uh, a CD standard which allows you to describe data sets and metadata for data sets. Well, ARM is a similar thing for tables and figures um, with, 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 with some differences because, uh, for example, in your e-submission, you describe all data sets in Define XML. And in ARM, you usually describe a small subset which corresponds to output supporting key objectives. So uh, you, you do not select all, just select a subset. And uh, well, the main uh, idea, the main purpose of the analysis results metadata is to help reviewers in regulatory agencies to understand how you got your result. So uh, similar to data sets, you just describe how you got a specific output, how you, which statistical method you used, which parameters you used, um, and, and et cetera. So basically, uh, the analysis results metadata uh, supports the complex outputs. So uh, if, if you have a very simple output, it doesn't make sense to describe it. But if you have something really uh, complex using some uh, statistical procedures, you want to describe how you did it. So from the uh, structure point of view, um, it's, it's pretty simple. So it's an extension of Define XML, meaning that you can have Define XML without ARM but you cannot have uh, ARM without Define XML. But on the bright side, uh, ARM is compatible with uh, both Define XML uh, 2.0 and 2.1 uh, because um, it's an extension. And uh, you know, 2.1 is coming in March. I mean, it's already available, so this released it, but FDA, for example, starts accepting this standard in, in March next year. So and uh, also it's 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 not as complicated as Define XML because mainly you have two structures in ARM. Uh, that's a result display which corresponds uh, to a table or to a figure, and then within each table or each figure you can have one or more analysis results. So let's say you have uh, two different statistics uh, calculated in your table, and this is the case where you probably want to create two different analysis results. So uh, let's actually look at uh, an example, and this is uh, this is some figure which describes change from baseline to some week uh, for for some test. And uh, on the right side, you can see an analysis results which corresponds to it. So basically, you have uh, what you describe there. You describe uh, which data set you used, which variables was used for the analysis. What are the selection criteria? Uh, for for your output, as well as the main part, uh, well, at least one of the most important parts is actually uh, the source code of uh, which you use to get uh, these statistics. So, in this presentation, I'm actually not going uh, to describe in details how uh, what is each field. I'm rather going to focus on some experience of uh, pitfalls. Uh, which can uh, face when creating the analysis results metadata. So because, uh, you know, it, it, although it looks easy, uh, the, the devil is in details. And let's, let's go and discuss these devil details. I always click page down instead of mouse click. OK, so uh, the first pitfall, the first challenge you can face is that the select criteria. I mean, the selection criteria, as you can see from the previous slide, it, is, it describes how you select records uh, in your output. So it's a filter. Uh, but you need uh, to use define XML where clause uh, and uh, where, 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 where condition, which is 
rather limited because uh, you can have uh, one or more conditions and the limit is that you must always connect them using using and logical operand. So for example, if you have a condition like this, uh, unfortunately you cannot represent it in R. So uh, you have to add some variable which will allow you to uh, avoid this or condition. So yeah, the, the, but in case, for example, you created already your data sets and you cannot add any variables, you already wrote your programs and for some reason you cannot change them, you probably uh, want to just add a comment in your arm because it's possible uh, to add uh, comments to data sets uh, and describe uh, why I used a different filter and maybe in the programming section, in the programming code section, also use the full filter. And the next challenge, which, which is actually connected with the same uh, selection criteria, is that the condition itself is, ra is rather trivial. So you have a variable, then you have a limited number of operators like equal, not equal, uh, or in or not in, and then the values. So when we write our programs, sometimes we can use uh, more complex structures. Like, for example, here I use Barrex Match and Compass, uh, which uh, which is okay, which works uh, fine uh, if you're using SAS, for example. But if uh, you're trying to describe it in ARM, uh, it will be a challenge. So actually, once again, you have to create variables which will allow you to use these uh, trivial uh, conditions. So basically, um, regarding the selection criteria, the main idea here is to create analysis ready data sets in which you can simply select the records. So you do not have to perform these uh, or conditions or use the functions. Yeah. So, um, and the next type of challenges which you can face when creating ARM is connected with the code itself. So, uh, okay, I, I made such an artificial example, but you know, when we are writing ARM at a late stage uh, and someone who created a program didn't suppose that there would be an ARM created for it, uh, you can end up with such kind of things. And uh, for reviewers, um, they want to see one output. They want to see, for example, what are the parameters, what is the alpha, or I don't know, the confident in intervals uh, used for your specific uh, output. So you do not want to have this, all of these uh, macro where can, uh, if conditions within your uh, final arm, you actually want to uh, clean it and make it specific only to your output so that the reviewer can easily read it. Um, so, and uh, if you think that's the worst case scenario of the code, well, it's not. Uh, when you're creating arm, you can face something like this. And by all means, I don't want to say that if you have a macro, a hell level macro, which allows you to create quickly some type of analysis, it's not bad, it's good. We, we, we try to automate things and we try to make things efficient. Uh, but when you're doing it, you also should think about ARM. Like, mm, okay, I, I made this uh, macro, which can easily allow to create some statistical analysis, but then you need to think, okay, but for ARM, I need to have a part which will allow the creators of ARM to quickly uh, generate the code uh, required for the reviewers. So just think about it in advance and um, yeah, everything should be good. And well, for ARM, when writing code, of course, uh, you should follow some basic uh, things like uh, write readable code because reviewers, they say, we do not need to run the code, but we need to understand the code. So you, you should really write readable code. Uh, use consistent uh, coding style because you know if programmers do not have a coding style and unfortunately in our industry for some reason coding style is not such a common thing. So, but if programmers write their own with their own styles, you can get uh, ARM with completely different uh, programs and for reviewers it will not make it even any easier to understand it. And yeah, probably you want to add comments. Uh, because uh, even if you are not putting it into the ARM, you can add a link to a program from the ARM, by the way, and reviewers may want, it will be easier for them to understand your code if you properly comment it. So um, speaking about it, um, 
the next thing which I want to discuss is actually the ARM timeline. Because um, initially, when I started creating ARM, I thought that, uh, well, you need to have a final defined XML uh, and uh, ba based on that, uh, only after that you can create R. The thing is uh, that's, uh, that's not the starting point. Of course, you need uh, define XML uh, to, uh, you need define XML to uh, link variables to link uh, document documents and other things, but that's not really the starting point because, as we saw before, uh, you really need to think about ARM when you are writing your code. So you need to use those three suggestions from from the previous slide, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's how you should uh, do it. And even that is not the starting point. Uh, when creating the analysis data sets, you should make them analysis ready and specifically for the, uh, those data sets which are supporting your ARM outputs, you should create the variables which will allow you to use uh, simple selection criteria. So, and uh, well, basically what I want to say is that you start creating ARM not when your defining XML is ready, but uh, even before the programming, when you identify your outputs. And now let's uh, quickly uh, talk about uh, the FAIR, because uh, while well, Hugh and Holger just explained to you that those principles, I, I think that's great. And uh, the data, I think that the defined XML, sorry, the CDISC standards, the ODM XML based CDISC standards, really help to make uh, our metadata and data fair. I mean, standards like defined XML, like data set XML and other. But uh, when you have some data or metadata following the fair principles, you actually can start building applications based on it. And uh, with, with the fair data, it's much, much easier. And you can get uh, some efficient app uh, if you use uh, such data. And this is what I'm going to talk about in the second part. It is the Visual Define XML Editor. That's, uh, that's uh, the application which, uh, I mean, which Sergey and I were developing for at least uh, almost three years now. And uh, it is an open source application. So uh, you can go, you can download uh, the code, you can download the app and try it. You can even change it if you, as you like. And uh, well, as you can understand from, from the name of this application, uh, the main purpose is uh, uh, editing and creation of Define XML. So at the moment, it supports Define XML 2.0 and as well as the ARM 1.0 standard. So for ARM at the moment, there's just one version. Uh, and uh, it, as I said previously, it can be used with both Define XML 2.0 and 2.1. It has some additional features uh, which can help you with editing of the ARM and with editing of Define XML. So it has, for example, review features, it, it has bulk editing, and it also integrates with the CDISC library. You probably heard about it, so you can now access the data from the CDISC uh, using API and the application. I mean, that's that's one another. Uh, that's another example of uh, fair principles used in our industry, and it, based on it, it also can it, it builds a, a browser uh, for CDISC library and for the control terminology. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, let's now go and actually, I want to make a live presentation because you know it's it's uh, it's it's a bit more interesting to show something instead of just um, reading about it. And I will show you how you can create ARM uh, with the Visual Define XML editor. So first of all, you actually need to import Define XML into, your, in, into the system. And uh, yeah, so you just import it. Uh, you, you will see the variables, data sets, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but you will not see ARM by default. So to do it, you need to go to the standards and you need to actually enable it in the standards view. After that, you will see two additional tabs with result displays and analysis results. So let's just create something in, in 
uh, in this example. So let's create table, let's call it overall survival uh, one, uh, I will explain later. Uh, you can link uh, documents uh, to your analysis result. So to the description, you can link, for example, uh, a CSR and a specific page of it. Um, so that, that we created a result display which corresponds to a single uh, table. And then what you need to do is go and create, describe what this table contains. So once again, in, in this simple example, I will just uh, describe, oh, I pressed caps lock, uh, describe a single result uh, uh, with, uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you just uh, point and click, you add data sets, uh, you select uh, uh, the data which you want to, I mean, you, you, you specify the uh, selection criteria for your uh, analysis result, you, your documentation, I don't know, it actually doesn't matter much, but uh, let's create something. And uh, the, the last thing, you, you also want to specify a programming code. So you have a context, uh, you have some code. Uh, I will, of course, not write the real code here. Just an example of, of um, some code uh, source. Oh, source data. And I know there is a delay. I'm sorry, I forgot that there is a delay. So I am probably uh, should wait a bit. But uh, yeah, you create something and that's pretty easy. So as you can see, uh, it's it's not too complicated, and we just created some analysis result for for a table, and uh, you can even see how it will look like uh, in a browser. So when you open uh, Define XML in a browser, you will see exactly that's the same thing. And uh, okay, I just missed the analysis variable, so let's quickly add an analysis variable, which should be pretty easy and straightforward. Okay, fine. Um, yeah, so you can see that we just got an analysis result. Uh, we added a table and added an analysis result. So it's 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 really not too hard. But at the same time, I usually try to say that creating everything from scratch is not an efficient way. So that is why uh, you can copy you can copy within uh, the same result display, you can create and copy uh, analysis results, you can copy a whole result display and create it. So let's, by the way, do it now. So that tremendously uh, saves time as uh, progression-free survival, isn't it? Uh, it tremendously saves time because you do not have to re-enter everything all the time. And uh, yeah, so, but it's, it's not even, uh, everything because I suggest, I personally suggest to create a library with all the analysis results you previously created because in this case you can quickly uh, copy uh, uh, something from from that library if you have a similar output. So for example, uh, let's copy this uh, CDISC example analysis results or results place. Uh, but yeah, th there will be, for example, sometimes uh, you can miss um, uh, something because analysis results reference data sets, reference variables in these data sets. And if you are missing something, actually the, the application will say you about it. And that's why you, you, you want to go and to copy the data sets first uh, before, before copying the result displayed. So let's, let's copy this. I think these two data sets are needed. And uh, now it should work without any issues. Now you should be able to uh, copy from CDISC example without any problems. Yeah, you can see we just copied it. And once again, uh, everything is available here. So uh, that's that's the editing part. Um, and uh, well, at the same time, there are some features which can help you with the review. So uh, there is a syntax highlighting. Uh, you can copy the code by pressing this button. and uh, also, uh, we, well, one of the problems uh, which you can face is that you have, for example, 20 or 40 analysis results, and at the end, um, you will have, uh, you, you want to change 
small thing in all of them. So that is why there is such a functionality as bulk editing. Basically, it's copy-paste between Excel and, um, and VD, so Visual Define XML Editor. You just select uh, the, the analysis results you want to copy or result displays in this case. Uh, let's, let's make it just with result displays. Uh, result display, sorry. Uh, you copy that information, you change it as you like. So for example, let's let's just create a lot of new tables. Okay, I think that should be, for example, one. I'm not sure if it will properly copy it. Okay, it works. Yeah, so we just created uh, more tables here and now we can go back and input it into the system. So, and uh, as you can see, everything is here. So everything uh, was added. And once again, you can review it with a style sheet. And see right away that uh, new things were added. Okay, I actually wanted to change a CSR link, uh, but that doesn't matter. So you can copy paste between Excel for some quick changes. And um, that can be convenient sometimes. And from the review, uh, but from the review point of view, there is also some functionality built in. So, for example, you know, it's it's hard to annotate uh, the it's hard to annotate uh, the panic smell, but within the visual panic smell editor, there is um, such thing as uh, review comments. So you can just type uh, something and uh, be done with it. So and someone can. Uh, say to you that this is fixed. Also, you can quickly open uh, pages. So for example, if you reference something, if you reference a specific page, you want to check that you reference a proper page. That is why uh, you can you can do it right in the editor as well. And uh, yeah, so as I, as I previously showed, uh, you can also use uh, the style sheet. Uh, I mean, you can view the result uh, as how you would see it in, uh, in 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 a browser, yeah. When you open Define XML, so that's that's basically it. That's what I wanted to show today. So let me go back to the presentation and stop sharing. Okay. So yeah, uh, you you can copy between Excel and also you can copy from uh, CSV and JSON formats if you like. And yeah, that's uh, that's basically everything what I wanted to show today. So um, as uh, as I previously said, uh, it's an open source project. It's free. It's absolutely free. You can go and if you like, you can try it. Uh, you can download it from from the defineditor.com page or from the GitHub releases. Uh, we are very. I mean, we are very interested in feedback because uh, one of the goals to make it open source is to get a community who can uh, help us to develop the tool, help to find uh, things that can be improved. Uh, we are using mostly Telegram for this, but also there is a LinkedIn group which you can join. I'm trying to put some updates there. Um, so uh, yeah, that's, that's it. That's everything what I wanted to say today. So if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Yeah, there are already many questions lined up, so, so I'm afraid we probably won't get to all of them uh, in during the live session. But so let's get started. Uh, the first question was: If the same analysis result appears in many output tables or figures, uh, for example, the primary outcome, uh, the same ARM is needed for each output table. Is there any way to avoid this duplication of ARM? <laughs> okay, uh, that's clear. So from, from the structural point of view, I think you cannot avoid it. I mean, for example, in the final XML, you can reuse some elements. You can reuse methods, you can reuse um, item defs, you can reuse comments, and etc. But within ARM, I think that the analysis results are actually within the result displays. I mean, from the structural point of view, that is why you cannot reuse the element. And frankly speaking, I'm not sure you 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 usually, I mean, I have never seen a situation when you end up with 
identical analysis results. So maybe if it is within one result display, you, you, you want to create, instead of creating many similar identical analysis results, you just write one analysis result which will cover everything. And by the way, uh, you should uh, keep in mind that you do not need to create analysis results for parts of your table which are simple. So usually you want to create it for something which is complex. Uh, but in general, answer, answering your question, I'm afraid not. So you cannot reuse it as far as I know it. Okay. Are you on mute? The, the next question is a bit lengthy, so please, <laughs> please bear with me. Uh, if statistics generated by a complex macro, that is, for example, a just do it macro, one could extract sus, uh, stat code uh, from the log if mprint is used and log file is not, um, it's not, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm having problems with the long text. Uh, and the code is used to generate the output. Um, uh, the, the lock isn't removing the generated code. So in the end, this would be the accurate description of SAS code used to generate the output. Doesn't this mean that ARM could be or should be finalized after tables are, fi are finished? Some companies prefer programmers to reuse macros for complex things, and not every programmer is even aware uh, what a black box is doing. So, uh, okay, that's clear. Uh, well, let's say it like this. The ARM is for reviewers, and reviewers need to understand how you programmed it. If you just put uh, the log contents, uh, you need to check whether it's possible to read it, whether it's possible to understand that uh, that reviewers will be able to, if they want to, to replicate the result. That is why I think it's it's quite important not just to formally uh, copy paste what you have in your program, but also uh, think about it uh, in terms of the reviewer will try to understand it and will try to read it. So uh, uh, answering this question, I would say that uh, the, the you, you shouldn't simply copy paste the lock. Uh, you should you shouldn't simply copy paste the mpring contents. You really want to make something which is easy to read. And uh, yes, ARM can be finalized only once your programs are finished, because it uses uh, the code from the programs. Uh, well, it, it, if you are just updating the formatting, you probably don't need to change ARM. But at the end, uh, usually ARM is uh, finished after the programs are finalized. Next question is, is there a bulk import facility that you could import a file with all the required detail, details? Uh, and if not, then there is the suggestion it would be worth doing it. So, um, okay, uh, there's uh, this functionality which is a copy-paste between Excel and 3D. So you can, if you like, uh, you, you can do it, uh, you, you can copy-paste all of the ARM information from an Excel file. Uh, there is no, uh, I mean, there's no functionality which takes an Excel file and adds everything uh, which you have in ARM. But uh, at the same time, it's just almost the same. You, you, you copy paste two tabs and you have everything bulk imported into your, in, into the Visual Define XML editor. Um, the next question is, is your Define editor a shared uh, work environment? So can multiple people work at the same Define XML at the same time? So uh, the network capabilities are not yet supported. Of course, it's in the plans. Uh, it's what I dream of. Uh, but it is not there yet. So uh, it's, it's, it's a local application which, uh, which you can work only on your local computer. And if you want to share, you need to send a file uh, to someone else who can open it. But yeah, one day I hope it will be there. Mm -hmm. um, can a work loss be defined in programming statements so that the actual work loss could be used with or functions, etc. 
Uh, you, 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 you must use uh, the, the define XML backlogs, which cannot support functions or other things. So, uh, well, at the same time, as I said before, uh, if it is too complex and if you cannot change anything, yes, define it in the programming statement and add a comment explaining why you did it and why the selection criteria in your main part doesn't correspond uh, to what you actually have in the code.